1959, revolutionary Fidel Castro overthrew dictator Fulgencio Batista to become prime minister of embattled Cuba. The country remained under Castro's control for nearly half a century. It was the year's main event. On January the 8th, 1959, Castro's army rolled victoriously into Havana, surrounded by crowds of jubilant supporters. The United States recognized the newly formed government, and on February the 16th, Castro was sworn in as prime minister. Fidel Castro's political interest began while studying law in Havana, where his passion for social justice led him to offer free legal services to the poor. At the age of 25, Castro ran for the Cuban parliament. But just before the election in 1952, the government was overthrown by Fulgencio Batista, who established a dictatorship. Batista created a new, brutal regime, tightening his control over the universities, Congress, and the press. Castro and his brother Raul were among the 150 fighters who attempted to overthrow Batista during an attack on a military barracks on the 26th of July, 1953. The failed attack landed Castro in prison. On his release in 1955, Castro joined Raul and Argentine revolutionary Ernesto Che Guevara to form a group called the 26th of July Movement. The group trained in guerrilla warfare while in Mexico. They were determined to overthrow Batista and they set up a base in the mountains of Sierra Maestra. Alas though, a battle left them badly defeated and only by helping local peasants regain control of their land could the movement gather support and was able to reform an army to fight Batista's soldiers. Batista retaliated with violence and torture in an attempt to find Castro's base. This led to further support for the 26th of July movement, and in 1958, 45 organizations signed an open letter supporting the movement. Castro's revolutionaries had the support of the people, forcing Batista to flee Cuba and bringing the 32-year-old Fidel Castro to power. The streets were awash with the black and red flags of the 26th of July movement as Castro rolled into Havana on January the 8th, 1959. He called immediately for a general strike to protest the junta's selected Dr. Carlos Piedra as the provisional president of Cuba in the wake of Batista's departure. A new government was formed with Manuel Urrutia Lejo as president and Professor Jose Miro Cardona as prime minister. Miro stepped down on February the 16th, 1959, and Castro was sworn in as president of Cuba. The new leader began implementing change immediately signing an agreement to buy oil from the USSR and breaking diplomatic relations with the United States, kicking off a volatile chain of events. On January the 3rd, 1961, Washington broke off diplomatic ties with Cuba and on April the 16th, 1961, Castro formally declared Cuba a socialist state. The following day, a group of Cuban exiles, trained by the CIA and armed with American weapons, invaded the Bay of Pigs in an attempt to overthrow the leader. The Cuban military defeated the invading force and Fidel Castro consolidated his position as president. Tensions between the United States and Cuba were at breaking point, exacerbated by the country's support of the USSR and their willingness to house nuclear weapons during the Cold War. The standoff that became known as the Cuban Missile Crisis would bring the world to the brink of nuclear war. Fortunately, diplomacy prevailed, and in the years that followed, America subjected Cuba to long-running covert intelligence operations, economic embargoes, and other measures designed to destabilize Castro, all with little consequence. On February the 19th, 2008, the age of 82, President Fidel Castro, with ailing health, announced he would step down handing temporary power to his brother, Raul. Thought to be a target of more than 600 assassination attempts, Fidel Castro had remained true to his cause, creating powerful friends and enemies along the way.